Hey everyone, welcome. We are AEDs for Athletes, a youth-led nonprofit with a mission, creating safer communities through preparedness, education, and action. We realize it's not just athletes that collapse. It can be anyone, students, teachers, administrators, or visitors. Whether you're on the field, in the hallway, or out with friends, we're here to teach you how to respond with confidence and not panic. When someone suffers a sudden cardiac arrest, every second counts. For every minute that it passes without help, their chance of survival drops by 10%. But here's the powerful truth. When CPR is started quickly and an AED is used right away, survival can more than double. But saving a life isn't just about sports. It's about knowing what to do anytime, anywhere. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to step up and save a life. On the field, in the cafeteria, or anywhere someone may need you. Let's get started. So today, we'll cover why this matters and the stats nobody tells you, what actually causes a heart to stop in young people, how to save a life, the ABCs, high quality CPR, and how to use an AED, and finally, hands-on practice breaks will be embedded throughout so you can practice these critical skills. A few years ago, a clip from an NFL game went viral. You may know Damar Hamlin's story, but if you don't, Google it. We can't show it for copyrighted reasons, but we can totally talk through what happened. Damar Hamlin, an NFL safety, was struck in the chest. He got up momentarily and then suddenly collapsed into cardiac arrest. What happened was he was hit at precisely the wrong millisecond of his heartbeat. You will also notice that the game was stopped immediately, and the country watched as the well-practiced machine of the NFL's medical first responders rapidly assessed and managed a critical situation. Right there, on the field, within seconds of collapse. This is critical, and why we are here. The more people that know how to save a life, the quicker the response to emergencies will be. Stats time, but don't zone out. These numbers are important. In the US, on any given day, there are 54 million students and nearly 3.8 million staff in school settings. More than 350,000 cardiac arrests occur outside of the hospital, meaning they require bystanders to step in. Approximately 20,000 of these events occur in children. It is estimated that nearly 39% of these events are youth sports related. According to the 2020 Cardiac Arrest Registry to Enhance Survival data, only 21.2% of those 13 to 18 years of age who experience cardiac arrest survive to hospital discharge. More high school athletes die after collapsing than any other group. Unfortunately, CPR is initiated and AEDs used in only about 41 and 6% respectively in outside of hospital cardiac arrest. We are here to help change that because we know preparation is the essential key to saving lives. And so, the goal of this video is to empower you. Why are high schoolers dying at a much higher rate? Well, first, we have the most athletes, with over 8 million high school athletes across the U.S. Unfortunately, we're young, and a lot of serious heart conditions haven't been diagnosed yet. Sometimes, you don't know something's wrong until it's too late. Leading to problems going unnoticed and untreated. Another reason for the poor survival rates in high school athletes is that there are fewer people at high school events that are prepared to handle emergency situations. We know not every school has an athletic trainer, and even if you do, they can't be everywhere at once. This is why it is critical that we learn how to save our teammates. Now take a moment to think. Wherever you are, raise your hand if you've seen an AD before. Know what CPR is. Have watched either being used in real life. By the end of this session, every one of you will be able to answer yes with confidence, at least for the first two. We just learned that more high schoolers die from sports-related cardiac arrest than any other athlete. For every minute an AED isn't on that chest, survival drops around 10%, which gives you about 10 minutes before your teammate's chance of survival is about zero. An AED shock is the only way to reset a heart and restore it to its normal rhythm. Now, let's dig into the science. Think of your heart as both an electrical circuit and a pump. When everything is normal, it pushes out blood like a fire hydrant. And when things are going wrong, it just wiggles around like a bag of worms. This is an echocardiogram showing us the heart. In this first video, you can see a normal heart. See how it moves in a coordinated motion, pumping the blood out and filling back up. That's what a healthy heartbeat looks like. But now check out this second video. Something's not right. The heart is just twitching instead of pumping. It's kind of wiggling, like a bag of worms. That's called ventricular fibrillation, or VF. The heart's rhythm is off, not squeezing the blood out of the heart. When that happens, the heart can't move blood where it needs to go. 
the brain and body stop getting oxygen, and the person can collapse. Collapse due to ventricular fibrillation causes sudden cardiac arrest, or SCA. Let's talk about the most common causes of collapse in young people in the United States. Understanding this can help us understand the importance of knowing how to use an AED. First, we have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Let's break that word down. Hypertrophic basically means big or enlarged. Cardio refers to the heart, and myopathy means diseased muscle tissue. So basically, it means a large heart, which is kind of accurate. When someone has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the heart wall thickens. Take a look at the first image of a normal heart. The heart walls are even, and the space inside of the chamber is clear. So blood can flow out easily when the heart pumps. Now look at the second one. See how the wall is much thicker? That's HCM. The muscle, especially in the left side of the heart, gets bulky. When the heart squeezes, the thick wall can block blood from getting out the way it should. Some people with HCM don't feel any symptoms. Others might feel chest pain, shortness of breath, or a racing heartbeat, especially during exercise. It's one of the most common heart conditions found in teens and young adults, and it often shows up during high school. That's why it's important to learn what it is and how to respond if something goes wrong. Next, we have prolonged QT. The only way to identify this is to have an EKG. How many of you have had one? Prolonged QT is an electrical delay between heartbeats. You can see on this EKG that the spaces between the peaks is a little longer in some places. Olympic swimmer Dana Vollmer competed with it, but her mom was always poolside with an AED, ready for when her daughter collapsed and was fished out of the water. Her success story proves diagnosis and preparation can be successful. And finally, we have commotio cordis. This is what many people believe happened to Damar Hamlin. When the heart is hit at just the right moment, its rhythm can be thrown off and it can become a bag of worms. This is more common in sports like hockey, football, and lacrosse, where there's a hard ball, puck, or shoulder that can hit the chest. All right, enough with the science talk. Now we're gonna get into the how-to. We're gonna start with ABC, airway, breathing, and circulation. Pretty easy to remember. We have combined A and B together with the jaw thrust. This does a lot of really important things. First, it will check if the patient is actually unconscious. It will clear their airway and give them about eight minutes of air. The first goal is to figure out if they are, in fact, unconscious. So everyone feel right beneath your ears and behind your jaw. This will be a squishy part. Push down on it a little. That should hurt. Now turn to your partner and find that spot. Push on that spot, curl your fingers around the jaw, and pull forward. It hurts, doesn't it? Well, that is the point. The pain will cause someone who is conscious and does not need CPR or an AED to squirm or push your hand away. And if they don't react, you know that you need to continue with the steps. The jaw thrust also moves the tongue and the soft tissue out of the way, making sure the patient does not choke. And they take a big breath of air, giving you eight minutes. This is more efficient than having to breathe in the person's mouth during CPR. If you have an extra person, they can hold the jaw thrust to allow for a constant supply of air. All right, now that you know the person is unconscious and you have done A and B, let's jump to the next step, C, for check pulse. Since your hands are already by the neck from the jaw thrust, just slide them down and check for the carotid pulse. We check this pulse because it is one of the strongest in the body and stays detectable the longest even when blood flow is dropping. A quick tip, don't use your thumb to check the pulse because it has a pulse of its own. So use your index and middle finger to check the pulse. Okay, let's try it. Find your own pulse. Now your neighbors, it's a little harder. Okay, there are two parts to the C, the next being CPR. So interlace your fingers like this, and the heel of your hand will go in the center of their chest. You're going to push hard, about two inches deep and fast. Think of a song with a beat around 100 to 120 beats per minute, like Staying Alive or Baby Shark. When you do push down, make sure the chest rises fully before pressing again. That's really important, as it gives the heart the chance to fill with blood before the next compression. If you think about it, you are trying to simulate a heartbeat. So you are pushing the blood out and allowing the heart to fill up again, just to push it out again. 
If you're using mannequins, pretend that they have legs and don't straddle them, please. Instead, if you're using mannequins, flat on the floor and kneel beside it, keeping your elbows nearly locked. Use your whole body weight to press straight down. That makes your compression stronger and more effective. Okay, let's put it all together. You're going to practice the ABCs in CPR on your mannequins. Get into groups and see what you can do. Let's try it. Can you keep up with the beat for a full minute? Now you saw how hard CPR was and hopefully you remembered all the steps. So it's crucial that if you do have people around you that you form a line so others are ready to take over. And do not be ashamed if you do get tired because you are not helping anyone by doing tired, ineffective CPR. Okay, let's get into the AEDs. And don't forget, the point of CPR is to act as a bridge until you have an AED. This is what an AED looks like. You can find them all over, in libraries, airports, schools, and other places. An AED is the most important step when you have someone that has collapsed, because it is the only way to turn that bag of worms back into a fire hydrant. Okay, when you open an AED, or your training AEDs, they will have pads. These pads should be placed around the heart, on the right collarbone and under the heart on the left side. Here, you are creating a circuit to jumpstart the heart. If the patient is a smaller child and the pads don't fit without touching each other, put them on the front and back of the kid. Here are a few tips. The patient does not need to be completely dry. Just do the best you can. The pads need to go on bare skin. The pads cannot touch because they would short circuit. Try not to put the pads on jewelry. Move necklaces to the side and if they have a nipple ring, try not to put the pad on it because it would burn the patient. If the patient is older and has a pacer, don't put the pads on it. It kind of looks like a big box under the skin. And finally, it is okay if you break some ribs when performing CPR. It may happen, but someone would rather have broken ribs than be dead, so don't stop. Just to reiterate, every second counts. Whether it's getting the AD or starting CPR, acting fast is absolutely critical because you typically have about 10 minutes before the chances of survival drop dramatically. If it's been longer, don't give up. Start anyway, and whenever possible, move quickly and decisively. AEDs are made to be easy to follow and will instruct you while you use them. Now we're going to put everything together. Unit OK. Stay calm. Check responsiveness. Call for help. Attach defib pads to patient's bare chest. Attach defib pads to patient's bare chest. Don't touch patient. Analyzing. Press flashing shock button. Shock delivered. Start CPR. Here's what your practice should resemble. If you still want to practice, split into two teams. Then your teacher, supervisor, or coach will be the help. You will work together pretending a mannequin is a collapsed teammate or bystander and bring them back to life. Now, try to figure out where the AEDs are at your facility. And whenever you travel or have an away game, ask where they are located. Now with your team, figure out roles. Have the fastest person be assigned to be getting an AED. Someone needs to call for help and have a backup plan for those days when that person's phone is dead or when there's no cell phone service. Everyone else is in charge of holding the jaw thrust and performing CPR. Create a line and step in when the person in front is tired. You just learned skills that can save a life. We have a responsibility to be prepared and educate ourselves. Remember, when a life is on the line, you are the help until help arrives. Thanks so much for training with us. Now, get out there and be the heartbeat your community can count on.